Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I want to show you a bit behind the scenes of the tech that I built into my car that wasn't there from the beginning. Some of you requested in the comments below my Italy road trip videos that I show a bit of the behind the scenes how my little battery percentage display works and I just recently updated it a bit. It now also shows the temperature of the battery. Yeah, I just want to use this video to show you my current status, what it does, how it does it and um, yeah, how you could rebuild all of this yourself if you drive an e-golf and want this display and additional information for driving, which is really useful. Anyway, I brought you here to my GitHub and um, as you can see, I've got a little project that's also linked below in the description. Um, this is my e-golf OBD battery project. And it's just one more or less simple Python script. Um, and it just reads the percentage values and the battery temperature values out of the diagnostic part of the car and calculates what the values that it gets back mean and uh, converts them to human readable, understandable uh, values that you can just work with. I'm not gonna go over all the details uh, what each single step of this does. If you want to know about that you can just read the script yourself and try to understand what it does or just comment below and ask me. I'm happy to explain everything but I'm not gonna go through it in that much detail in this video. What's important is I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero and I got one lying around here. This is just this little uh, single piece computer, mini computer thing. It's powered by a micro USB port which uh, gets its power from my car, from the USB or the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug and uh, to it I attached a USB OTG cable which is a little adapter cable, I can just show you. It's a cable like this one. It has a micro USB on the one side and a normal USB-A female plug on the other side. And this gets connected to the Pi and on this side there's a USB to OBD dongle which connects the Pi to the diagnostic port of my car. And then this screen can automatically um, request data from the car and that's done down here. It uh, navigates to the hybrid control device more or less. Um, it's the hybrid one because Volkswagen just used uh, the one they had laying around and I guess it was coming from the plug-in hybrids so they just also used it in the e-golf which was just a compliance car back then and this was cheap to use because it was there anyway. Um, and from this device I can request all the relevant values. Over here I'm defining the display which is connected to the Pi. That's just connected to four of those GPIO pins. Um, and then the cable runs all the way from my uh, breaker box or fuse box up to where the display sits. I just stick it to the dashboard behind the steering wheel and uh, yeah that's connected with a little cable. So that's all the hardware that's behind this. On the Pi I installed I think it's just a simple Raspbian so the Raspberry Pi OS uh, but I modified it to be read only on boot as this Pi always just gets shut off when the car turns off, the power is away and I don't want any data corruption, so I'm not mounting the file system read-write. 
otherwise it could be possible that it's just currently writing some system relevant document or file or anything and shuts off while writing and then something breaks and everything's corrupt and doesn't work anymore and to avoid that I just mount the SD card read only and um, let the Pi write only to a cache which uh, is lost on reboot. This whole script is run as a service. On boot the service starts automatically and goes through this opening bit, the header more or less, um, initializes the display, initializes some variables and um, loads the fonts that are needed for the display which are pretty similar to the fonts used in the car itself. It's not exactly the same but it's close enough for me to have just realized it half a year later or something so that's close enough. Um, I define the device, the serial device which is connected which is the OBD dongle. You might have to adjust this depending on what hardware you use. And after that there are my different methods for calculating the different uh, values it gets from the car to human readable values. I got those from a German EV forum. I just put them in here and tested around until it worked. So this one is the method to, for getting the percentage of the battery and calculating it to a normal decimal value which I can uh, write out as or print out as um, percentage value. This here is to calculate the temperature which is a bit more complicated because I need to read out a abstract value which is relative to the realistic one and I use JetGPT to uh, find out which formula I need to use to calculate the real value out of it. So this happens in this part, reads out the hexadecimal values, converts them to integers and then calculates all of them to the result which needs to be done to have the real values and those are returned. After that, this are just this is my loop which runs all the time. Every seven seconds, it requests new values and calculates all of them again, prints them out as they be as they should be um, shown on the display, and uh, gives me all the details. It calls all the different functions. You can read through that. It's more or less self-explaining. I commented a lot in it for everyone to be able to understand it. Um, down here I'm trying to find out if the car is currently plugged into the charger or not. Um, I just looked at different um, data sources and looked what changes and uh, used those changes for the script. I'm not exactly sure what they really say, I just know it shows one value if it's plugged in and another if it's not plugged in. So I, all of this is based off that response that I found out. I have no clue what it means, but I know it's plugged in or not plugged in. And that's all that matters for me. Um, and then I set the screen mode to a different screen mode. Because if the car charges, I switch between the percentage and temperature and my charging speed in kilowatts every seven seconds, every time it requests new values. That's all done in here and with this one and down here I just uh, fill the different variables with what is actually printed on the screen and what isn't and that's all with some if clauses and, and different things. Uh, I think this as well is more or less self-explaining, self at least if you know a bit of Python or a bit of programming language, it's pretty easy, I would say. If not, if you have any questions, just comment down below, I'm happy to explain. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is about that. 
If you're driving an e-golf, at least the model year 2017 or newer, then this should work out of the box as is. I will link all the different hardware I use down below. The Pi, which is currently quite expensive because of part shortages. Uh, this OTG adapter, which uh, I had lying around, I don't know, but I think you can find those easily on Amazon as well. I can link them down below. And also the little screen I used for the Pi will be linked down below. It's a little 0.91 inch OLED screen, I think. You might need to install some libraries for that. I'm not sure, it's quite a, it was quite a while ago. If I find out which ones they are, if I can find it again in my history, I will put them down below in the description as well, but I'm not quite sure about it. It's all based on Python 3, so if you want to do it, you need to install the Python 3 and the Adafruit libraries and PAL and the OBD library, which should all be available in pip, the Python package manager thing. That's all there is from the backend side. This is my little screen that's just sticked on there with some double-sided tape or something. And for a bit better looks, I packed it in isolation tape because otherwise it, it would just be such a green or blue uh, PCB with the screen on it and the cabling on the right in this case. Uh, so I just packed all of it in black isolation tape. It still doesn't look that good, but I don't have a 3D printer and uh, I didn't get to ask a friend to print it. So that's how it is right now and for almost a year now. Um, the cabling goes down here in the middle. This is just like artificial leather, I guess, or real leather, I don't know, um, for moving the steering wheel. And here on the side, on both sides, there is, th this isn't connected. So you can see here, there is just a hole to the back of the dashboard. And that's where I push the cable in. And the cable then goes down here. As you might see, it's coming from above and going down here. And here you can see this is the Raspberry Pi I showed you before. Um, wrapped also in isolation tape to not uh, get any short circuits or something. Powered by a USB cable which I pushed over here from there all the way through here, down here, over there and into my center console where it's plugged into my uh, multi-plug situation there. To access this fuse box where the Pi is located, I need to remove my second little glove box department thing that's normally over here. And um, yeah, I just shoved the Pi in there. Then the black cable you can see here, that's uh, the OTG cable I talked about. Uh, that's where the OBD diagnostic port dongle is attached to with a normal USB cable. That sits somewhere back there. And in here, that's my Y adapter cable, which is plugged into the OBD board, uh, port. Gives another OBD port to plug in another device. And then this cable runs all the way back there and goes up into the dashboard where I stuffed all of this shit in. So everything fits and looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's it's okay, I guess. Hi there, Nico from the edit talking to you. I just remembered I also needed to isolate the power leading pins of the USB cable for this um, OBD adapter cable to the Pi because if I didn't isolate it, the Pi would al always have power from the OBD port and tries to read data from the diagnostic system. And if that happens, the alarm of the car starts to uh, ring and, and cry and shout and 
do things and uh, send emails and notifications and everything. So if you do this, um, try not to request data from the OBD while the car is turned off. And to do this, just try to turn off the Pi when the car is off. So isolate the power pins of the USB cable from the OBD adapter or just use a Bluetooth adapter. I couldn't get mine to work, but maybe I'm just too stupid for it. I don't know. That's just how it is. So back to me and the car. And yeah, that's pretty much all the hardware setup there is. And this Pi then just runs my script as I told you before. So I hope I could give you a good view how this works and how I made all of this. I hope you liked the video and if you need any help with this just write me down in the comments below or uh, on Twitter. I'm always here to help and happy to do so. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one. Bye.